Hello. Resume recording. Okay. Take it away, Susan. All right. So uh, I know uh, Mara, I know Russ, and I know Lee. Uh, Johanna, I don't know you. So would you please just introduce yourself and I can tell you a little bit about myself so that we have a, a rapport and then Lee, uh, you know Mara, but do you know Russ and Johanna? So if we could just do kind of a little bit of introduction. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I know Mara and I know um, Russ, having spent a good amount of time at, at their space, taking Reiki with Mara and um, a shaman's class with Ross. Um, I, that's all. I have my own new moon and another circle and um, just excited for this experience. Um, Susan, I watched the the preparation video that you did from your from your garage that was really cool nice. um so i'm i am glad to be here are we gonna are we gonna meet every day for the nine days at two o'clock is that the plan i was confused mara you're shaking your head no there's there's gonna be something every day available online it may or okay. may be a meeting some are going to be facebook live um but on this particular subject today meeting again at two on friday um to just kind of come back together and and uh okay our community around this particular topic so and the hope is that this first online together meeting will inspire you to create an altar uh that you can share on friday with the group okay. so that we see the fruits of you know of of this discussion and how you brought things together for yourself to create a space uh, for the Divine Mother and do that on Friday. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Um, I'm gonna step away for two seconds and close my blinds and get something to write with. If that isn't too disruptive, I, I, I don't wanna hold up no, starting. I'll wait for you because I have a question for you. So go ahead and take it. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of set this over here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that did a whole lot of nothing, Johanna. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you get to have a halo sometimes in the sun. <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, there I'm not so glary. Um, thank you, thank you. I'm often a day late and a dollar short when it comes to gatherings. I don't know, personality defect. So Susan, what's your question? So I have two questions. So first, uh, Lee and I are currently in Lenaway County. Um, and so where are you located and how close to Even Stars and what's your range? of uh outreach and stuff oh um i'm i'm in washtenaw county i'm in ann arbor i'm 20 minutes from even stars i guess what do you mean by my range you said you have a new moon gathering oh oh that <laughs> um Southeast Michigan, pretty much right now, it's um, being advertised through Enlightened Soul Center. I had been um, having uh, in in person circles there, but we're moving to Zoom, and maybe I'll get you know a a wider range. So that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Good, good, excellent. All right. Well, thank you. Um, Lee, would you like to tell us about, have you met Ross? I know you've met Mara. Um, I think we've met in the store, actually. So nice to see you. Hello. <laughs> um, Susan, what was the question? Oh, just tell us about yourself. Oh, well, here I am down in Lenaway County with Susan. Um, I've been to even Star Chalice for some of their events. Get up there as nearly as often as I would like to, and this time of year, all my thoughts are about gardening and waiting to get outside. Yeah, and if I may, Lee has bees, 
I have bees. <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, no they're out in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That and and Lee is a, a an amazing resource for um, bee lore and uh, what do you call bee horticulture? Like that's a little a bit of a apiculture, 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 uh -huh. and horticulture. Really, right? I mean, I'm a master a gardener as well, so I garden, gardener. and my specialty is native plants for pollinators. Native plants for pollinators. Oh, and the retree Tecumseh. And retree Tecumseh is trying to plant trees on public spaces in our town. Yeah. So, okay. That's and how I tend the mother. <laughs> we see that you're here. So, click your little video button and click your little audio button so that we can both see and hear you because all we see is your name now. But hi, Julie. Glad you're here. <laughs> Julie, they want your video on. <laughs> you don't have to have your video on, but that it's nice. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Lee, anything, anything else? Uh, um, just the last thing was that that's how I tend the mother in general is to tend Mother Earth yeah. and earth healing and making things grow. Yeah. Yay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, so since uh, Julie is still coming online. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you since Johanna, you're, am I saying your name right? Is Johanna? Yes, yes, thank you. Yep. So uh, I've only been in Michigan um, about six months. I met Mara this past August. I moved here from New Jersey to be closer to my family who is mostly in Northwest Ohio. Um, but my sister lives in Clinton, which is how I landed in Glenaway County. And um, so I moved here uh, not really knowing what my future was going to be. So my past has been basically uh, an academic nonprofit management person. Uh, my future looks like it's going to be uh, author, teacher, healer. And so that's what I'm working towards with Mara and Russ and even Stress Chalice is to bring uh, more resources about healing and connection with the divine and bringing people together in those around those ideas and topics in southeast michigan so that's kind of how i landed here <laughs> we're and glad we, to have you even if it is yeah, the wilderness even if it is <laughs> it's not the wilderness anymore no not as much as it used to be <laughs> yeah so um okay julie give us a sign that you're with us Come on, Julie. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay. No, I am here. I'm just walking around my house. So my would <laughs> be mostly the ceiling and then the door. Let the dog in, let the dog out, feed the dog. Oh. So I haven't settled into stillness yet. So I didn't want to drive people crazy looking at all the cobwebs that are on the ceiling. <laughs> And understood, especially since I think that Julie is here because Lee just texted her about 10 minutes ago. Correct. So, you know, just uh, well, Julie here. Is... I actually said an alarm. Um, <laughs> so this was, yeah, but, but yeah, it, I do have Lee to thank for this. <laughs> are you going to be joining with the video, Julie, or are you still in Unsettled? I'm still very unsettled. Can you hear the dog in the background? And um, <laughs> so... Is it okay if I don't, or do you want me to get No, yeah, moving? that's fine. Do you want to um, introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. I am Julie. I'm in Tecumseh. I caught a little bit of um, Lee's intro, um, so I, that, that's when I came in. I'm not sure what else you're asking. Um, I don't know very much about what you're chatting about today, so looking forward to lurking and learning. Okay, and if, if I may introduce you a little bit from what I know. Um, awesome, that. thank you. you know, uh, so Julie, I first met Julie because she's working with the Presbyterian pastor in Tecumseh and the Presbyterian pastor owns about 80 acres of land that she is working toward um, making available to people as a kind of a spiritual retreat and healing place. Uh, that is still forming, but I met Julie 
uh, as initially as a botanist, an environmentalist, uh, someone who is very connected to the earth and to the land and knows her native plants, knows her edibles, knows, you know, so all questions about plants. I go to Julie first and then I go to Lee. Um, so <laughs> well, the right answer. <laughs> well, and that's only because that's how I met Julie, right? And I let me, met Lee about bees, so it's that order. Anyway, so uh, anything else you want to add to that, Julie, before? No, that's, I think that's, uh, that's pretty solid. I just had a super exciting uh, conversation with somebody yesterday in the gas station lobby. He was, one person was kind of grumbling about the shutdown and the other guy was talking about how he's going to go to the state park. He's like, well, I guess that's what's open. My family will go there. And my heart did like the happiest dance because yes. Yeah. So such a huge upside of, of what we're experiencing right now mm -hmm. is I hear so many people chatting about going outside. That yeah. just makes yeah. me so happy. Yeah. 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 Okay. M Mara and Russ, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? I mean, I like getting to know people, and you two, you know, I mean, I feel like everybody knows Mara and Russ, but Julie doesn't know you, so. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hi. I'm Russ. I'm one half of the proprietorship of uh, Even Stars Chalice, and we're a wonderful little metaphysical shop in beautiful downtown Ypsilanti. And we're wonderful, and we're very happy to be hosting this. Yeah, it was a little bit uh, challenging to think about how we were going to take something that was meant to really be about a common space and community gathering and, and make this shift. But I think, you know, I think it's going to be okay, <laughs> right? And so, so I'm Mara, and um, yeah, I uh, co own Even Stars Chalice. Um, I have a lot of different hats that I wear roles that I do. Um, but yeah, I, I like what you were saying, Susan, about, you know, just, I think the, the roles that I, I am living in the world right now are as teacher and healer and priestess and mystic and <laughs> showing up and serving in the ways that are um, being asked for, I hope. Um, so, yeah. I, I think so. so. All right. So the topic today is uh, altars and sacred space. And the point of today is to encourage people to find the sacred space within their heart and find a way to express that in their environment. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit about how to prepare both your heart and your space, um, ways to bless the space, to invite divine energies in, and just looking at different traditions, um, everyone has their uh, favorite or go-to culture or tradition that they kind of follow and are comfortable with. And everything and all of them are welcome and okay. And we can learn from each other and um, go into our, my cat is at the door clawing to get out. <laughs> That's all, once <laughs> Bring them in. <laughs> and so the idea is to, oh, the idea is to listen to other people's ideas and thoughts um, and see how other people's ideas and thoughts can be incorporated into our own. Or, um, you know, just critically examine your own thoughts and practices and see, dig deeper into what works for you and why it works for you and why something else might not work for you. Um, this, all of this preparation that we're doing and talking and altars and sacred space has to do with the Divine Mother. Navratri is the uh, traditional Hindu Indian celebration of the Divine Mother, which lasts for nine days. And uh, it's a time that's always scheduled immediately after the first new moon of spring and so when the new moon happens immediately after the new moon the moon starts waxing again to become full and it's during that time 
uh, when the energy of the moon is about ripening and fulfilling and growth. And so it's at these, this particular time every month, but particularly on the springtime uh, equinox where that energy is available to us in the form of the Divine Mother. And so as we uh, seek that divine energy in the form of the Divine Mother, that energy responds to our seeking by uh, blessing us and bringing us fullness in our lives and in our hearts and in our thoughts. So that's the point of doing all of this, is to have a fuller, richer life with a greater understanding and relationship with the divine in our hearts and in our life. So, Mara, anything to add to that? Anyone? Oh. Anything? To add? <laughs> you keep going. <clears throat> Me keep going? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> I'd like to just hear from everyone. I mentioned um, that everyone has a tradition or things that are comfortable to you. Uh, Lee, you mentioned taking care of the earth as kind of your way of expressing it, but I'd like to, so I'd like to hear more about that, Lee, and from everyone, what, where are you comfortable? Like, what are the traditions and expressions that you particularly are comfortable in and with? Okay, I come from kind of a, a generic Wiccan background. I don't quote unquote practice Wicca anymore because I'm kind of allergic to ceremony in most cases. <laughs> but for me, everything in nature is where I find the divine. So anytime I'm digging in the yard, that's an act of service. Anytime I'm making something grow or watering my plants, that's an act of service to Mother Earth. Um, so I, the short answer is I find the sacred in nature. And do you, so other people who I know who find the sacred in nature do things like build fairy gardens. I have one of those. You mm -hmm. have one of those? I have one of those. I have an outdoor altar. I have sacred space in my yard. Okay. In fact, I've just been cleaning it up to get it ready for spring and hope to be out there today since today's the new moon doing that later on probably. Good. Okay, so that, uh, what you just said, we're going to put a hold on that. We're going to put a little tack into that what you just said about cleaning it up to protect uh -huh. it. Hold uh -huh. that thought because I'm going to ask you more details on that. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay. So other people, where are you comfortable and how do you find expression of the divine? So I can, I can jump in. Um, <clears throat> well, even Star's Palace is really, uh, you know, it's known as a gallery of altars. And there's a, a level of the divine feminine that runs through it all. And so for me, um, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with most altars and, and, and with expression in, with, um, and, uh, and even those that uh, use no iconography and it's about d direct connection, right? Um, but I think that uh, aesthetically, I like to move toward the divine feminine. I like to have goddesses on my on my altar. For me, for me, an altar is for me an altar is an interface for a conversation with the divine and or the scene or you know between the scene and the scene world. So to me, it's like an interface, and um, and so my altars will change depending on what conversation is wanting to take place there. Um, so, but, but I mean, as, thank, as far as specifically to the question, I mean, I was, I was raised Christian. I have done fairly deep dives into Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, some of the Sufi tradition, usually on the mystical end. Uh, Kabbalah, right? So usually on the mystical end of most of the of, of the traditions is where my my kind of wheelhouse is, I guess. So thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> I don't know okay. what the question is. What's the question? <laughs> what is your comfort zone for the sacred? 
What traditions are you comfortable with? What do you know? Oh, that's so broad. I, I, um, I'm comfortable with a lot of traditions. Um, I was raised unchurched. Uh, I studied philosophy in college. I have a degree in philosophy. Um, then I became a Presbyterian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I became a Buddhist. And then Wiccan, uh, none of which I follow or practice anymore. But what's really gotten me most comfortable recently is getting more grounded in mystical paths and mystical traditions. Um, you know, it's kind of, kind of as the, as a kind of ground zero of the sacred. Um, and where am I most comfortable? Even stars. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Pe people tell me I spent too much time there, but you know what? I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Johanna, anything? Okay. Um, I was churched um, until early 20s, found a lot of comfort in um, Protestant youth group movement in the 70s um, until I was molested by a minister. So that was over. Um, and I don't know why I shared that. It's never been shared before, but I feel comfortable. Um, so went to Wicca, Buddhist. My focus though is more earth-based right now. Um, and I consider myself not a that my calling is teaching, period. I was a, a public school, private school teacher for 20 or more years. And um, that's my, that I guess that's my gift to the mother is holding space for sisters um, to, to safely look within themselves and, and find the mother within themselves. So, um, that's been my journey, and um, I formed I formed my circles because I wanted a circle. So nobody else was doing it that that I whatever connected with um, until I met Mara and mm -hmm. participated in the beautiful full moon celebrations, and that was very um, that was very instructive to what I do and what I what I really feel called to do. So, um, but of course now that kind of lead leaves a void. So I'm, I'm doing as much exploring circles for myself and now online, I'm like on a circle almost every day somewhere. And, uh, cause I need that, I need that nourishment right now. But, um, so to wrap it up, um, earth based, Celtic deities, seasonal altar kinds of things, and um, and always just exploring and learning. And I'm I'm a perennial, constant student too. So mm -hmm. that's my story. And and so as a teacher, do you you didn't mention this specifically? So I'm uh, kind of putting two and two together. But as a teacher, do you feel a special calling to uh, assist children specifically with their spiritual growth and their path and finding the divine within their hearts? Mm, I have not. I've not considered that. That's very interesting. Um, more, I, I had more of a traditional teacher role. Um, information is my drug. I, I crave it. And however I can absorb it, wherever I can find it. And um, yeah, I felt my, my role as a classroom teacher was to um, 
ignite <laughs> ignite a sense of curiosity if nothing else um not not always easy but there we there were always little sparks here and there that really kept me going and um that was that was just beautiful and that fed my heart and it still does oh, great good thank you uh julie are you uh are you there? Do you want to talk about where you feel comfortable and what your are I, I am. I would say, um, well, I would, I would say kind of ditto to all of the above, <laughs> which is a little bit of a cop out, but um, someone, um, someone in a journaling group I'm in shared the imagery of a butterfly or a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. And several years ago, I worked at a landscaping site that sprayed hem heavily uh, because they had a zero tolerance for any kind of <laughs> pests in air quotes on their plants, which is, it, it just struck me as profoundly ironic because they spent an unbelievable amount, amount of money to select native plants. So um, I spent the better part of early summer collecting monarch eggs and monarch caterpillars and raised a whole bunch of monarchs. Um, and really got to, to know a little bit more of the caterpillar to butterfly um, progression. And I would say that, you know, I, I've used the butterfly, the chrysalis, or, or butterfly chrysalis, or caterpillar chrysalis, butterfly sequence. It, it, there's a, such an apt metaphor for so many things. And this morning I thought my, found myself focusing more on the chrysalis stage, which is Unlike a tadpole turning into a frog where there's a noticeable form at each stage, the caterpillar actually dissolves in the, into the goo inside the, the chrysalis and emerges as a butterfly. And as I sat listening to, this morning as I was journaling, and as I sat listening to all of your beautiful descriptions of where you are and who you are and what you do, I felt a sense of my goo-ness more than I ever have before. So I would say right now I am goo um, with a whole lot of faith that something significant is changing and I could describe to you who the caterpillar was but I'm not sure that's true anymore so I'm the goo hanging out right now with belief that something else is being knit together that I can't describe yet so I'm not very helpful <laughs> actually, I'm delightful goo right now oh, no, I'm no. gonna just love it your description and just say ditto and as a cop out <laughs> right i'm feeling yeah. kind of gooey too yeah right. me too i love, love it i right love it Julie, yeah i think that goo um yeah and i i have thought that myself um in the past years like it's it's just this this complete breakdown of identity and right and, it, and it's so much more than transition. It's like, it's like, you know, the natural phenomenon of Kali coming in and destroying to rebirth something new. But in that space of destruction, it's like there's nothing mm -hmm. tangible, nothing obvious. Yeah. Nothing else comes out of it. So, yeah. And I, I, yeah, I really struggle beyond my name and beyond some some things of where my house, where I, the house I'm in is located. I really struggled to describe myself because how do you describe goo? <laughs> so, and so yes, thank you. Thank you for understanding my gooness. I think yeah. you have resonance in the whole group. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So I, I won't do a complete cop out um, with my little introduction. I have, um, I have a, uh, Christian background. I've done a lot of exploring in Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, A Course in Miracles, New Age thinking. Um, I didn't think that I liked ritual and stuff like that, but I do it and I guess I like it. But if you asked me five years ago if I liked ritual and ceremony, I would have been like, no. <laughs> but here we are uh, and I do a lot of rituals and ceremonies. Um, I find my uh, um, understanding to be very intellectual. Um, I, I've noticed that just even in the course of this conversation and as we talk, I've, 
I've mentioned like the divine in your heart and expressing the divine in your heart. And I'm noticing that for myself because that type of talking is relatively new for me. Uh, talking about the heart, talking about the emotions, talking about the senses, talking about that kind of connection. Um, because most of my life I have been very intellectual and mind driven. Uh, but I've done a lot of work to bring it down into the heart. Uh, so I think, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, uh, and I'm looking forward just to finding myself more uh, within a group of people. I've done a lot of solitary, I, like I'm a monk mostly, so I've done a lot of solitary inner explorations and this period of time in my life is the first time I've really kind of stepped outside of myself to learn and be with a group of people all moving in the same direction. So for that, I thank you all for being a part of that experience for me. So. All right. So uh, Lee, I'm going to come on, come back to you again, because we were talking about um, you cleaning up your yard. Yes, and All right. So what what are so now what we want to do is think about the traditions that you're familiar with and the things that you already do and bring to consciousness bring to your awareness and bring to everyone else's awareness how each person uses their own framework to bring things like purifying and blessings to their space mm -hmm. and brings that in a conscious way into their life mm -hmm. so uh purifying and blessing um, okay so one one of my outdoor sacred spaces is a brick patio that i have a stone circle set up on and they're just you know they're maybe oh there's some of them are quite a bit larger than a melon but a lot of them are just like you know about so big and um that will all need to be cleaned for after the winter, you know, the squirrels have brought their peanut shells and made a mess and uh, the plants around it, of course, are all dead and need to be trimmed back. So with today being the new moon and the weather being reasonably, at least it's dry, um, one of the things I intend to do this afternoon is to go out and do my, my first of the year cleaning of this brick patio. I'm going to move my big rocks and clean under the rocks, put the rocks back where they go, I have a lovely um, sandstone altar in the middle of it, so I'll have a candle going and some sort of offering. There are no fresh flowers, which is my usual go-to, so I'll have to improvise something. And being mindful as I clean this space and start this new cycle, you know, I'm starting a new cycle for myself as well, and hopefully, you know, continuing to spiral upward, um, thinking about how I am so very different than where I was just a year ago this time of year and that's due in large part to all these things that are happening in the world around us plus um, in my personal life my husband recently retired so that makes everything different um, so trying to set the intention that this is going to be a good and productive cycle that we're starting now and that good things will come even if we can't see them I feel inspired to go out and clean off my patio, which prior to you talking was a chore. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's all in the attitude. <laughs> okay, anyone else? And, and this, so drawing from your own personal experience for purifying and blessing, but also from what do you know? You know, what are ways that people can use to purify and bless a space? Mm -hmm. We'll be using some type of smudge when I do this cleaning. I will actually yeah, absolutely. Sweep, sweep it with a broom, you know, do the physical cleaning and then give it a good smudge. And you, you smudge outdoors? Well, because I'm cleaning this particular space. And so how do you smudge without walls? You just, I'm going to wave it over the space and hope it helps. <laughs> Do you go in any particular direction or do you start at a, at a, uh, well, if, if I'm, if I'm banishing the bad entry, I will energy, I will go counterclockwise. And then when I bring in good energy, I'll go clockwise, counterclockwise to banish okay. clockwise to bring in. 
Okay. Good. And what do you use to smudge? Um, lately, I've been using a lot of dried mugwort that I grew in my garden. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I like mugwort too. <laughs> okay. And it, it grows in these long fronds, so you just gather the fronds together, and you've kind of got instant smudge. Nice. Does it burn? Does it burn like sage in a similar mm -hmm. way? Similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. It won't last as long as sage. Uh, the smudge sticks I made up are pretty much like one use, but that's all I need it for is, you know, yeah. one use. Nice. Okay. Thank you. I also do the, you know, the physical cleaning, right? When, when cleaning and resetting a space. And, um, <clears throat> and I have like multiple altars. And so um, I have one that's kind of like my life altar that's set almost all the time that I will periodically go and clean and kind of reset. But the other ones are more intentional for specific uses. Um, and so uh, when, when doing those, I, I'm just paying for purification purposes. I'm making sure the space is clean. I sometimes will use herbs, but usually I will use energy. And so I will, I will potentially create cast as, as, as they would sometimes cast a circle. I will sometimes do that, often do that. Sometimes I call in the elements, but often I will just use um, light. I will call in like a pillar of light to come and just purify and raise the vibration of the space and to make a direct connection with the divine or, or the divinities, right? That, that um, I'm wanting or, or of, this, of the space itself. Um, so yeah, I do that probably most often, and I sometimes use uh, Reiki in that process. So I sometimes use Reiki symbols um, to purify and cleanse and prepare a space. And so, is calling in a pillar of light something anyone can do? I think so. <laughs> so, so is it? I mean, how can you give us a quick? Well, um, how would that happen? How does that happen? It's actually through. I think it's through the heart. Because um, when I think about doing that process, what I'll do is I'll, I'll center and ground myself. I'll connect with my heart. I'll have my heart connect with higher self and higher. And then I will just ask that the, the highest vibration of light that's possible in this space right now be brought in. And um, yeah, I ask and then, then you can, you feel it. You know, you, you, when you're sitting in there, you can, you can, well, if you're energy sensitive at all, um, you, you feel the shift in the actual space. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Have, uh, Julie or Johanna, have you done much purifying or blessing of space? A um, little Met. bit of smudging. Um, new houses, new areas with the four walls i think it's so interesting lee that you smudge outdoors and i was going to ask what does mugwort smell like is it something you'd want to use in your house or is it horrible it mostly uh, smells weedy oh yeah. nice so yeah. green kind of greenish <laughs> yeah okay you or do you mean marijuana e no <laughs> no i mean it smells like you're burning a weed you're getting out of oh, your yard. oh okay it just smells green. <laughs> right, got it. Um, yeah, no, I am I feel like I'm here to learn. So um, yeah, right now I don't have any much to offer, but that, that's about it. Uh, I'm a snicker because I had the same question. So <laughs> with, what do you mean by it smells weedy? <laughs> um, so thank you for asking that. Uh, I don't have any anything that I practice in, I was raised in traditions that were very skeptical and cynical of, um, but yet ironically deeply in, embedded in their own purification and blessing rituals. So um, again, with the goo, um, what I, what I do like was um, I took a class in college on Japanese tea ceremony and you, um, every participant cleansed them self symbolically by dipping their fingers into a, a water fountain um, upon entering the space. And you would dip your fingers to signify the cleansing of the outside of your body and you would 
dip your fingers and touch your lips to signify cleansing the inside of your body. And that has been a while since I've taken that class. Uh, but I said that, that rhythm stays with me in terms of, of cleansing and purifying. Yeah. I, I love what you just said about a motion, a small gesture, a tiny action signifying. And so I, because sometimes people think that it has to be this big production or this big show about what it means to purify or bless. And more and more, I'm realizing that it's just simple. And the, what you just described is, you know, the the water on the fingers and wh where was it, the sprinkling? Was it like a sprinkling and then on the lips, you said, Julie? I, uh, touching the lips, I'm trying to remember if there was anything other than just touching with intention to cleanse the body. I don't remember that there was like a splashing of water or anything. I think you just touched the source. Yeah, yeah, and that to me is so beautiful. I, I spent a lot of time um, with uh, water purification. And in this particular tradition that I used with water purification, it was necessary to bathe, like take a bath for an hour twice a day. And the idea was that the water surrounding you cleanses the auric body. So it cleanses all of your chakras and cleanses your energy. Then someone from a very similar tradition said, take a bath every day. You're stewing in your own crap. About taking a bath. And I was, I still to this day, I cannot take a bath in the same way that I used to be able to take a bath. And so this ritual that I had for so long about purification, but I mean, I did prana, so it was both air and water at the same time and working with both of those things. It was really, you know, I was really into it. And so it just shifted for me. And I was like, what, the, what do I do now? So moving on into the progression of that understanding, someone said, well, just stand in the shower and think, purify, purify, purify. And so that's what I've been doing um, ever since then. Is, and, and I've realized, so Julie, what you were talking about kind of reminded me of me standing in the shower, just having the water wash over my chakras, having the water wash through my energy body. And I also use the, the mantra Om Namah Shivaya, which is I honor Shiva, the one God. Um, and so that is a purifying mantra. And so as I'm thinking that mantra, and I'm, I'm also thinking purify, purify, purify. And it, that's what I do for purifying, <laughs> you know, and it's so much simpler. And now I kind of like the idea, maybe I'll just touch the shower and touch my head. And stuff. But, I'm just going to touch the faucet. <laughs> Check. <laughs> um, yeah, I love using the, um, the shower as purification for self. Um, but I also um, sometimes will use that as a way to bless and purify the water. Um, and so then I also picture the water being filled with light and healing light as it's coming down and washing over my body and purifying me and then going down the drain and all of that light going into the water systems yep. and cleansing and purifying there. Um, and and it's, it feels really powerful to do that and to you know, so it's just kind of like it's 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 me, but it's also you know the whole the whole water system. And then I also find myself, um, oh goodness, I hope I get this right. I, I believe it was some Algonquin women who have gifted us through video um, the water song, and I learned the water song, and I sometimes sing the water song in the shower, and it's about water as life and blessing and blessing the waterways. Nice. Yeah, so as far as blessing the water, I have, um, so there's a woman who I, I follow, who I trust. I, I feel like her words and her energy make sense to me. Uh, her name is Patricia Cota Robles, and she 
offers um, blessed water in little vials, which you can take that little vial and add it to uh, bigger tanks of water. And then she provides uh, the blessing that you put your hands and then the words that you can say to bless the water. And then you leave it out in the sunshine for three days and you let the sun do its thing. And so after those three days of after having said the blessing to the water, which takes about 10 minutes and then leaving the water out in the sun for three days, now that water has the capability of being taken to any other water and blessing that water in the same way. So all of that, it's about 10 minutes of blessing and three days in the sun and it's a long process. So again, <laughs> is all of that necessary? I mean, Mara has just described uh, purifying and blessing the water that goes out everywhere. And so, so my point is, figure it out for yourself in the best way that's right for you, right? How, what feels right for blessing? And you can bless something, you can purify something with the smallest intention, um, with the smallest gestures, with the smallest um, actions, uh, connecting with the heart and connecting with the divine and bringing that energy into whatever space or container or whatever it is, the person that you want to ask for purifying and blessing. Um, and there are so many different ways to do it. And I think I would probably just throw in here, I mean, I think probably everyone on this call is aware of this, but I've run into this where some people think, well, you have to be special or on, a, on some kind of level in order to offer blessings, right? You know, because they think of like blessings as this hierarchy, hierarchical thing, right? Blessings come from, from above. Um, and this, this, this kind of uh, practice and way of being in the world doesn't rely on hierarchy. We bless one another with our breath. We bless one another with, you know, our open hearts. And, um, and it's how the divine, I think, speaks through, speaks through us, right? Is through our ability to, our ability, every single one of us, our ability to bless and to give blessings. And so a practice that I started doing when I lived in New Jersey, so it's been a few years that I started this practice, is that whenever I would drive and see roadkill, I'd just say, oh God, bless. Mm -hmm. And then I have my mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, and I would repeat that three times. But in the intention, it was uh, praise this life that was taken, release this life that was taken, bless this life and it's that simple just mm -hmm. god bless and uh, we can do that uh with anything at all times everywhere and bringing god's blessing goddesses blessing divine blessing <laughs> into the earth with simple gestures and thoughts will change the energy of everything that's going on. So, um, any thoughts before I, we're, go, we're headed to conclusion now. <laughs> <laughs> so any thoughts on what we've been talking about? Russ, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. All right, so um, the point again for this little discussion is to encourage people to have a sacred space for the next <coughs> nine days intentionally to invite and welcome the Divine Mother into the world and into our hearts so that we can live in um, a way that is more aligned with uh, the, the Divine, the Mother and the Father, but particularly the Mother at this time. And right now, <laughs> the Earth as Mother really needs our help. So. We'd like you to join us again on Friday uh, here at 2 p.m. And the Zoom link is uh, posted, I guess, on the Even Stars Chalice fa Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And what we'd like is for you to share your space, your altar, your divine sacred place so that we can and talk about how you purified it, how you blessed it, how you chose 
the things that are in your space or on your altar. Um, and just do it as an exercise, um, taking away some of the things that you've heard and that you've learned. I think I'm going to go do my, I, I really think I'm going to do that. I don't know that that's what it's going to be. But I, think I, feel like I need to go work on my patio right now. <laughs> Listen, can, can you show? Go ahead, Julie. I've been waiting until temperatures are consistently over 50. That's been my excuse. <laughs> I'm not cleaning up any vegetation. I'm just cleaning up debris. Oh, rats. Right? <laughs> Leave the stuff standing until the good bugs wake up. Yeah, well, and so I should mention Julie was at my house, uh, what was it, a week ago? Was it a week ago? Oh my gosh, a lifetime ago, right? A long time. <laughs> anyway, we boiled off maple syrup sap together. And Julie, God bless her, like dug up roses and transplanted them, cut down some of my wilted bushes from last year, identified my quince bush, <laughs> dug up and reburied a little animal that was a beloved pet at one point. And right? so Julie was already... we removed the plastic too. We wanted to, we wanted to keep the animal and the the sacredness, I guess, of, of that was someone's beloved pet that they put there, but they buried it in double plastic. Oh. Um, so we we removed the plastic and, and retained the animal. And uh, we were trying to decide if it was a cat or a dog. Admittedly, neither of us are biology majors, so it was pretty, it was, it was pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the part that, that made me laugh is I was telling my sister, my very traditional, conventional sister about this, and she said, why didn't you just pick up the bag and double bag it and throw it in the garbage? <laughs> just a very, oh. <laughs> a very different idea of what to do with that surprise finding in the ground, which just, uh, <laughs> how do we come from the same parents? occurred to me. Right? Never, right, it never occurred to me either. So I, then I took a picture of the, the jaw bones on a shovel so we could, I could ask some of my, my animal friends, of, you know, decide cat or dog, I'm just out of curiosity. So I sent that picture to my sister and her response was fifth bag. So <laughs> five, five plastic bags. Uh, but it's so just the, the different perspective of what is sacred. It just has, has I've really been observing and, and paying attention to. I so look forward to seeing people's altars on Friday of what is, what is sacred. <laughs> So do you all kind of have an idea now of what you're going to be creating? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so a... we'll be sharing it visually. You want me to, my space is in a different room than I'm in now. Just kind of bring my computer in there and point it and say, this is it. Is that the if plan? Okay. With that, yeah. <laughs> or if you do something in your garden, you know, <laughs> Wi-Fi. <on your> <laughs> yeah, no. No. Not a gardener. Or you can uh, you could also take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, show us a picture. That yep. that would be real easy. Good, mm -hmm. good. Thank you. We can figure out how to make that work. Yep. Yeah. Susan, before we go, can can you show us your altar? Yeah, I would like that. Facing, yeah, you've got the camera facing a different angle. <sighs> So this is my altar. Um, mm. a dig quick, quick introduction. Um, this one is Saraswati. This one is Lakshmi. So Saraswati is the goddess of creativity, knowledge, wisdom, aesthetics. Lakshmi is the goddess of prosperity and wealth, including all types of wealth, including spiritual wealth. This is uh, Sri Hedekandashvari, who is the goddess of uh, Herakon, which is the holy mountain at Mount Kailash. And then I have Kuan Yin, uh, the Buddhist uh, goddess of healing. And she is surrounded, I have a lot of earth elements. So these are all earth elements because, and Kuan Yin is sitting in the middle of the earth element because our earth needs so much healing. And then fire represented uh, ether, water, my little shell, and a peacock feather for air. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. And that will probably change before Friday, because... 
Yeah, my, I, I'll, I'll, if you would like, I can show this yeah, please. Um, because it'll probably change before Friday. I'll probably switch to more of a Lakshmi centered uh, um, altar on, on Friday for Friday. Uh, let me see. Uh, so I have uh, Durga here. Um, and a, a lot of uh, Navratri is uh, when, when I was looking, when I was doing my Google homework, <laughs> I was seeing a lot about Durga and Navratri and kind of this form of the mother um, as, as having a special place. And so I thought I would start us off with, uh, with Durga. I have, of course, uh, the candles. And so the red, um, the red signifies actually the great mother. This is kind of her color. Um, if you think about womb space, internal womb space, and, and lifeblood, and all of these things. Uh, so that's why I use red, the red candles, and also bringing in the fire. I brought an earth with a selenite stick, uh, air with a swan feather, mm. and, um, and water, of course, in, in uh, I have an offering bowl here that's uh, for kind of to represent the chalice, the, the, the offering, the holding uh, space. And so... Yeah, that's that's the um, the home I've created for the Divine Mother for the next few days. Beautiful, nice, cool. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, any final questions or comments or anything? And uh, you know, I'm available if anything comes up and you want to talk about anything. You know how to reach me. So, just thanks, reach out. Susan. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, turn myself off. Yes, okay. thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Julie, I, um, <laughs> thank I think you. I asked this question before you joined, Julie. Um, do we have your permission to, we've been recording this, do we have your permission to post it more publicly? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.